are very tough times for Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister and leader of the Conservative Party. Some polling out overnight done by Lord Ashcroft, published in the Daily Mail, suggests his personal net approval rating is now minus 59. Give you some context of what that means. That puts him on an equivalent of where John Major was back in the mid-1990s, but more interestingly, almost exactly where Jeremy Corbyn was on the eve of the 2019 general election. But there's something even worse than that in this polling. It suggests that on defence, taxation, migration and Brexit, and think about those four, because they're all areas that historically would have been stronger for Conservatives than for the Labour Party in all four of those areas. <clears throat> we find Labour are now more trusted, Keir Starmer's Labour Party, more trusted than Rishi Sunak's Conservatives. Now, the one thing we could also say through this and much other polling is there is no great enthusiasm for Keir Starmer, no great love of Keir Starmer. This is not 1997. It's not Tony Blair riding in on a white horse and things can only get better. And I do wonder sometimes whether a lot of the numbers in the Labour lead are just saying we can't bear the Tories, we feel let down by them, we're going to go for Labour, with perhaps not being that sincere about it. Now, history suggests that things can turn around. It suggests that as elections get closer, polls narrow. And I can think of the 87 general election, but perhaps even more so the 1992 election, when everybody thought Neil Kinnock would win the election, and yet John Major got a majority of just over 20. But to that, I think this. I don't think the polling in those days was quite as accurate as it is today. But I also think this. I don't believe this Ashcroft poll or many other polls that have been put out. I don't believe it's really about Rishi Sunak. I think if Winston Churchill came back and led the Conservative Party, it wouldn't really help their ratings very much. My belief is it's the Conservative brand that's really taking the hit. 14 years, uh, people feel very let down, nobody quite believes anything they come up with and say, and they keep changing leader anyway. How on earth were getting rid of Rishi Sunak after the May the 2nd elections improve their prospects? I believe that the Tory brand is absolutely in the bin. I don't think Rishi can recover, but tell me, am I wrong? Can Rishi recover? Farage at GB News. Dot com. Now, I'm joined on my right by Scarlett Maguire, director of polling firm JL Partners, and GB News' own Albie Alan Kona. And you, of course, have founded Conservatives Against Racism for Equality. Correct. Albie, you're not as pessimistic about me, about the Conservatives' chances or Rishi's chances, are you? No, I'm not as pessimistic, because I think if we look back in history, and you, put, you did put some yep. general election polling yep. uh, to us just then, and you mentioned that the polling wasn't as accurate in those days, I will just talk about another election that maybe we, is more recent in time, the 2017 general election, when Theresa May called that snap election. I think the Conservatives were 25 points ahead in the polls when that election was called. The party almost took for granted the fact that it might actually win the election and by the end of that election campaign Jeremy Corbyn almost won because the campaign was so bad because the policies weren't very good and ultimately it all changed during the election campaign and what I'm saying is is that whilst the polling for Rishi Sunak at the moment is bad there is no getting away from it I would love things to improve many people in the Conservative Party want things to improve it could all change during the general election campaign. I put it to you, Albie, that what happened in 2017 is people actually saw Theresa May for who she was. They weren't sure before. And I would put it to you that people will actually see who Keir Starmer is in the 2024 no, general point. election campaign, and then they will have to make a decision, a straight decision, between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, and I think at that point the polls will close. Albie makes a very, very good point, in that we don't really know quite well, who Keir Starmer is or what he stands for, or well, do we? Well, that's certainly something that we hear an awful lot when we do focus groups. We continually hear that. People say we're not really sure what it is we want, you know, he wants to do, we're not sure about the direction of the party, um, and they are uncertain about him. The one thing I would say as a slight counter to that is I think at this point there's actually more upside for Keir Starmer in a campaign than there is for Rishi Sunak. So I think partly Why? because I think um, this idea that Rishi Sunak is out of touch um, is so persistent and it cuts to something deeper about how he communicates, how he interacts with normal people. I think all of that's going to be very visible on a campaign trail.
profile. And we've seen in, like, um, in focus groups, but I think also in polling, all these attributes about Rishi Sunak that people really don't like, the sort of um, what they perceive to be talking down to them, about lecturing them about the economy, whatever it is. Uh, Keir Starmer, for whatever reason, even though he's not very compelling, I, I, I don't mm. think many mm. voters feel compelled, inspired by Keir Starmer, he does seem a little bit more normal. Uh, it's a low bar. It's a very low bar for politicians <laughs> across the board at the moment. What a terrible thing um, to say, isn't it? No, I mean, well, it here is. we are, with a general election coming up, two prospective prime ministers, and you, you know, from a polling company that runs not just polling but focus mm. groups, where you'll get much of this stuff, are saying that neither really connect with ordinary voters. No, and it's, you know, it, it's not just me saying it's something you hear across the board and it's actually not a problem just for them either. I mean, uh, trust in politicians generally is at a record low. I mean, that's been sort of steadily decreasing, especially if you think about something like the expenses scandals, but it's far worse now than it is then. Uh, I think it's, I think it will be hard for anyone to recreate that sort of Tony Blair energy in 97. Mm. Keir Starmer often gets uh, compared unfavourably to Tony Blair. I think he is no Tony Blair, but I think the circumstances around are very different. People have significantly less trust in politicians. I think it's hard to blame them for that. Uh, but that is certainly the case. And so I do think now, if you look at, it's not just the headline polls, they were, uh, they got it wrong in 2017. That was a big polling error and we saw a huge movement during the campaign. I just think when you look across the board, when you dig behind voting intention, when you see about how people feel about the leaders, about the key issues, everything at all, uh, it looks so bad. But, was that not but at Albie's point stands, the things can change. Things can change, and I think things are more likely to change during an election campaign than they are in any period before, point, no matter how long or short that is. You know, yeah. if we have an election in two months, uh, more will happen in that six weeks than it will before then. Likewise, if the election is at the end of the year. Trust, Albie, is very, very important. It's very interesting that the Rwanda bill, which the government's placed so much on, they could have forced the pace to try and get it through before recess. They didn't do it. We're now told they're delaying again until next week. I almost get the feeling they don't want the Rwanda bill to go through because they know they can't deliver even when it becomes law. I am fairly sure we will see the Rwanda bill go through at some point. The question is, will it actually lead to planes getting off the ground? And will those planes getting off the ground actually lead to boats stopping in the channel? And that is the core point. Rishi Sunak's government have nailed themselves to this pledge, we are going to stop the boats as a result of a lot of the pressure that you put on them, Nigel. And I think Ooh. it was good pressure, but now they've actually got to deliver on that. And I think that the problem is, is that we get reports every week about the Rwanda plan, about, about accommodation being sold in Rwanda, mm. about all of these issues coming up, about how expensive Aeroplane it is. Aeroplane companies won't Plane take companies them. Plane companies not taking them. And you just think, well, even if it does pass through the Lords and then pass through the Commons, is it actually going to stop the boats? I'm not sure. No. So what is going to be the one big thing, other than Starmer making a terrible mess of it, What's the one big thing that could turn CNX fortunes around? Well, let's see what happens with the stop the boats policy and whether or not the Rwanda plan actually works. I think if I think if the small boat crossings are lower this summer than they were last summer, Rishi Sunak can continue to say that he's doing a better job at stopping the boats than any of his predecessors. So far, they're thirty percent up this year. Well. That's what I mean by after the summer. We've got to wait until after the summer period. Then we'll know more definitively whether or not Rishi Unite's plan so, to stop so, the boats is better. So you're suggesting or worse. that's the issue that could. That is turn a issue. Around. I think another issue is just on pure economics. We have seen inflation come down to 3.2%. It's going to be down to 2% in April if we believe the estimates. We do know that earnings are growing in a faster way than inflation. Earnings are outstripping inflation. I think earnings are at 5.6%. Inflation will be down at 2%. We've had the tax cut of 4%. So people will start to feel richer towards the end of the year. The question is, will they feel richer enough and will they stop enough boats in order for people to still trust Rishi Sunak at the next general election? Trust, Scarlett. Trust. My feeling about the Conservative brand is they've lost trust. I think they've completely lost trust. Um, uh, the, uh, the things that, uh, you know, you consistently hear from people, I think the things that you can consistently see is they've been promising an awful lot of things for an awful lot of years over, you know, many different leaders. Uh, and people continue to complain of the same thing, which they can't see any delivery on anything at all. I mean, the Rwanda plan is an excellent example of this. It's the past the two-year anniversary just recently. It's been in the headlines for two years for not doing anything. So it doesn't matter how much they stand up and say, we are going to do X, Y, Z, this is what we want to do. The them. public have just stopped listening. It's even worse than, I think, don't believe in for them now. They're, they're they're tuning them out entirely. And I think this is the part of the problem with the economy. I can completely understand why people in number 10 saying, you know, we need to wait as long as possible. Mm. Things might get better. And the economy mm. is probably their best hope at that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's nothing to say that people are going to give them uh, credit for this if it does happen. We can see this across the pond. We do a lot of polling in America. Yeah. Joe Biden's been given no credit for, um, uh, you know, a, an economy that's looking an awful lot better than ours. Uh, and I think actually this is a slightly galaxy brain take. So forgive me. But um, it could even be worse for Rishi Sunak because 
because I think people, especially given what they know about his personal wealth, people get particularly sensitive to him telling them that the economy is better, that they should be feeling better off when, you know, consistently, even mm. if things are better than a year ago, a lot of people feel an awful lot worse than they did four years ago. And that's how they see things. Can Rishi recover in a word? No. Can Rishi recover in a word? Yes. I think it's a big no. I don't think it's even his fault. I think it's the brand. I think it's the Conservative brand. They've spent so much of the last five years basically fighting among themselves, worrying more about the shape of their own party, the mistake of the country. Is my view, but I'm very, very keen to get your views. Please, Farage, at gbnews.com.